We got a real special show for y'all today. But before we get started, I want to give y'all a brief overview. He's coming straight out of Queensbridge. He's the author of the book, Understanding the True Meaning. He is a rapper, a well-known songwriter, and a poet. He was a part of the supergroup The Firm, headed by Nasir Jones. He has worked with numerous artists such as Mob Deep, Capone and Noriega, Wu-Tang Clan, and numerous other artists. He's the CEO of Legal Hustle Records. To all my listeners in North Carolina, turn your volume up, stop what you're doing. I give you the hustler slash rapper, all around entrepreneur, called Mega. What's up, man? What's good? <laughs> we here, man. It's all about you today, brother. Talk to me, brother. Tell me what you got going on, brother. Well, right now, what we doing, uh, right now, we're just getting ready for this um, book event that I got coming up. I'm having a book signing slash pop up shop on 23rd and the Hall. So that's what we're working on. I put out a book called Understanding the True Meaning. No doubt. So, every month we try to do a book event. No so doubt. And, um, this month is Harlem. We're going to be in Harlem. So, we got that book out. I just released The Sneaker. Uh, I did a collaboration with Patrick Ewing Athletics. No doubt. I still sneak a lot of Ewing Athletics. And uh, the sneaker just came out last Saturday. So, you know, we're, we're happy with the sneaker. We're promoting that. No and doubt. And we just focus on that one. Knocking out the new music too right now. No doubt. Listen up, people. Listen up. We got Understanding the True Meaning. That's the book. He's the author of that book. And you can catch him Saturday, September the 23rd, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's Hamilton's Bakery, 3570 Broadway, New York, New York, 10031. And you can get your ticket at uh, eventbrite.com. That's $20 will get you an autographed copy of that book and a cup of joe. Y'all know y'all love that coffee, man. Y'all come out there and support my brother. And he got the sneakers. Don't like coffee, we got tea. Everybody don't like coffee. <laughs> Talk to him. And check it out. He got those sneakers for you, them Patrick Ewans with Mega on it. Talk to him, brother. How you swing that, man? No doubt. And um, and then we, we we made it happen. First, I was hesitant about doing it because um, I had to familiarize myself with the brand. No doubt. Before I do it, but a lot of people allow me to do collaborations, but it's not. Sometimes everything ain't worth doing, so I just wanted to familiarize myself with the brand. I, I I love I love how you break that down. And yo, he got a crazy sneaker collection for y'all who don't know that Mega is a sneaker head, man. For y'all who don't know that. And them U-ones, them mega U-ones, they is hot, yo. You need to get them joints. Oh, and I got the website for you to get those, too. Um, It's on the tip of my tongue right now. But uh, you can get them. You can go to uh, uinathletics.com, and you can get that core mega sneaker, man. It's fresh. Y'all need to check it out. Talk to us, though, brother. Talk to me before I'm in North Carolina, man. Man, you know what? I'm glad you said that, because a lot of people be thinking that cats from up north don't rock with North Carolina, but... I want to take take a minute right now and just tell North Carolina how much you rock with us. And we want to say uh, rest in peace to your homie uh, Esdell T. Tisdale. Your homie Blue, he was from NC. Oh, he was from NC. So mega rock with North Carolina. Chose one records. You know he rock with us, baby. And look, he rock with us so hard, my man got a Carolina Blue 6-4. Talk to him, mega. Okay, I've been talking about before I even know how it was. My mother actually has roots in um, South and North Carolina. And um, there's a woman in, in um, Winston Salem. Like, my mother and I were so close when the lady died. The woman left a house for me and my sister in Winston Salem. So we had a house, but by the time we found out about it, it was, um, you know how it is with the, with the, um, with the city and the law. It's like the, the city's over the house. I would have had a house in North Carolina and we would have um, um, my daughter was going to Charlotte. No you doubt. Know what I'm saying? I used to be in Greensboro. No doubt. Um, I'm trying to blow my people in Greensboro. I used to be in Charlotte heavy. I bought my home from Independence Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Just Charlotte. Uh, I used to be in Fayetteville. So shout out to my man's book. Fayetteville. He rocking with us. 
No doubt, no doubt. All right, and, and for all of y'all, all of my listeners who don't know, the book he got coming out is called Understanding the True Meaning. But Cormega also did an album called The True Meaning. And for y'all who don't know, that album was the most critically acclaimed and one prestigious uh, independent album of the year. He also won uh, the uh, at the Underground Awards, he won an award too. So for y'all that don't know, this is major right here for Chosen One Records Radio right now. Mega Ben doing his thing. Tell, talk to him, brother. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, two meaning we got that was the first independent album to ever get a source award. So the two meaning really helped open the door for independent artists because before like magazines wasn't recognized as independent artists. You wouldn't even get reviews in the source. They would just put you in the back and they get a little section, but like my album was getting reviewed and we got that limelight, so it opened the door. Um, the way that we restructured the album marketing wise, we, we did videos, inexpensive videos and the way we marketed it was just a was just another way for um for artists to understand that you don't need big budgets, you don't need major labels always to to um, push your product. So Ooh, y'all better y'all better yeah. listen to him cause he giving you some real talk, man. And he is a go getter, a grinder, man. Y'all better y'all better get up on it, man. Check this out. I remember when you left Def Jam in 2000, you released the Realness album. You was uh, number one on the Billboard, man. How did you feel right then? I felt vindicated when that happened. I was the number one um, new artist in America, too. It's Ooh. like um, the Heat Seekers chart. Every week, every time the Billboard comes out, there's a chart called Heat Seekers, and it's every and it's every um, genre combined. So it's like you could be a country singer, you could be a raw R&B singer, whatever you are. With, um, whatever the hottest new artists in the country are, they're heat seekers. I'm the number one heat seeker in America for two weeks in a row when my, when my album debuted. So, of course, I felt vindicated for all those years that I was on the shelf. And mm. I believed in myself, and, and the label was holding me back. Mm. I felt vindicated. And, uh, and uh, I was happy, you know what I'm saying? But also, it was like, um, that album was more important. That album was not just important for me, it was important for a lot of people. Because it was like, it gave the underdog a chance to believe in himself. And there's way more underdogs than people that are underdogs, you know what I'm saying? There are many people that are sitting confined in jails that see me as an inspiration, as, as somebody that did something with his life, and they know I walk the same, they, I was in the trenches, I walk the same path as them, so people that fell before, now they have somebody that can tell them how to brush off their fall and, and, and stand up and walk, so that album. You was talking about the album, you felt vindicated. And, and and for y'all who don't know what he mean by vindicated, if y'all don't know mega, if y'all don't know mega struggle, man, y'all need to do some history and some research, man, because uh, after his homie Blue passed, man, he said one thing that reminded him. He said, "You still, you a rapper, man," and and I think that's what pushed you to that point to just go and get it, brother. And we rocking with you, man. We rocking with you over here. Likewise, likewise. No doubt, no doubt. And uh. Ron Artest spoke highly of you, man. He said, and I quote, he said, you are the heart and soul of Queensbridge, brother. That's that's good when you have somebody of that stature on that level that can speak of you in such a way. And I mean, it's numerous people. Tragedy Gaddafi said you're one of the most honest people he know. And everybody had stuff to say about you. I mean, and it wasn't negative. They was just saying Meg is a serious dude and he's a go-getter and he's been like this and he's sick with that rap shit, so... Man, Woo. I'm just anxious to see what's 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 coming in the future, brother. Well, in the future, um, right now I'm really taking this. Um, I don't want to call it fashion, but the clothes, the clothes collaborations, and the design of thing. I'm really taking that real serious right now. The books, I'm taking it very serious right now. I got another book that should be out. Um, I'll figure out a date, but it should be out within it. I give it give it eight months. I'll have another book out. No doubt. Um, and of course, music. Music is the, the foundation. Hell yeah. So I'm working on like four different projects at the moment. I did a compilation album years ago. It's called Legal Hustle. So at the moment, I got on um, Legal Hustle two that I'm trying to work on right now. I got a bunch of features from numerous artists. Um, I got an album I'm supposed to be doing with Havoc from R D. No doubt. My beat, RP, our prodigy. Yes, for sure. 
No I got a uh, project I'm working on with Harry Floyd. Um, and I got another, um, I got some songs I've been working on with another dope producer. By the name of Street Runner, we've been working on some stuff. And then I got another producer that I'm working with right now that we're about to start working. I'm trying to knock out a quick a EP with this brother. Um, probably next month I'm going to keep that under wraps right now, who it is, and just try to surprise people. So right now, I have more unreleased music than I've ever had in my entire career. I have a lot. And we... So just really have- and we is ready to get that shit, brother. <laughs> Believe that. Hey, it's 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 just time for it, man. It's time for it. And uh, by the way, I got I gotta throw this in here, man, because brother, you you touched me, man, in a way. I, everybody always knew Comega could spit. Everybody know he was serious with his bars and how he brought it. But I, I didn't know, man, that you was involved with this uh this charity called Goldwater for brothers that sit disabled and in wheelchairs, man. Can you elaborate a little bit about that for us? I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm involved with it like that. I think all the credit for that goes to um, Hank Carter. Okay. He, he started, he built the whole foundation. It's a very, it's a very beautiful organization. It's just that, what happened was, um, I, I visited the, the, the organization a lot, and one of the times, a few times that I visited, it was captured on film. Yeah. But I do a lot of charity. It's just that, I don't publicize it. Like, um, you. a lot of things I've done, you you have to hear about from people that know me rather than like how Ronald Tess said what he said. I wasn't there when he said it, but when people say what they say, if you go around people, they'll tell you more than what's out there. Because I don't like the way I see it. Is like when you get blessings in your life, you're supposed to give it back. And no matter what your spiritual background is, like the deeper thing about the Bible is inside the Bible, there's no stories of any more real Bible. Mm-hmm. Or any other religious When you think about it Ooh. It's all about The spiritual connection With God uh. And no matter What your connection With God is You're supposed to do good mm. Especially when, when, when You've been blessed so, No doubt No doubt The Gold Water Charity thing Me being involved With that was a small Was small in capacity no to Compared to what King Carter has done But I've also um, I've uh, I've I've did a coat drive a few years for, for people that's homeless that didn't have coats. Mm-hmm. I did a uh, I did a charity fundraiser for um, people with AIDS mm. and things like that in New York City. And then I had a show after that celebrating that organization. Wow. And then after that, all the money that I made from the show, which was a core mega show, I donated all my money to them. And I wasn't even supposed to do that. That was my show. I thought that was, that was just a separate show that yeah. I made. I go home. I donated all that to, ch- to the charity. I donated to Haiti when they had their situation. I've also did a did a um a, a, a Haiti charity song. You can look that up. It's me featuring Redman, Maya as a singer of fame from MOP, and my brother Stick from um Dead Prez. Wow. Um, Do y'all hear how connected? Do y'all hear how connected he is with the community and just his uh, surroundings? Giving back when you get blessed, you have to bless somebody else. That's deep, brother. Yeah, yeah. That's I, deep. I went to Haiti. I went to Haiti, and it's funny because um, my friend Edna, who we both know, I, I believe she might be, she might have Haitian in her blood. She might be from the Haitian. Okay. Uh, shouts out to shouts out to Edna Cheddar, Blazing Charisma, um, and all that. So I went to Haiti. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did benefit concert in, in Haiti. Okay. Um. We donated money to somebody and put them in a home. Wow. Wow. Um, I've been to Africa. I've been to Uganda. Mm. I've, um, went out there to, to help an organization and show up. Wow. When I got home, I gave kids out there some clothes. The Adidas, the first Adidas. Um, when I got home, I found out that one of the, that the, uh, center, and you got the got robbed and somebody stole their computer. I sent them a computer. I sent them a brand new computer. So, um, it's, it's so much. I could go off a date. I've been doing stuff like this. Like, when I first started getting on it with music, I took the whole Queen Richard Six Flags. Yeah. And my publicist was mad at me. Hmm. Like, why didn't you tell me this? Because that's the type of stuff that she's like, you're supposed to tell me this because she wanted to have media there. And I said, because I didn't want the media to know that. I just wanted to do it. So it's like I always 
have been doing stuff like that. I just, I do it from the heart, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, um, conscious, you see your conscious every day in the mirror. And, and the things you do, God sees. So I don't do it for the media, I don't do it for the media pat on the back. That's right. I do it for, for, for the blessings. It's like, I got so many blessings, it would be selfish of, of me to not give back. So that's why I do what I do. Man, and, and, and man, a lot of y'all, listen, my listeners, a lot of us can learn from that. You understand? It ain't all about having the limelight and the camera in your face. You know, you got to do stuff from your heart, and, and that's good right there, man. Hey, man, you, you touched me with down right there, Mega. Matter of fact, check it out. I want to go into lyrics, and, and I, I put this together just especially for you, man, because I, I just really want to know certain things, man, because I'm an artist, too. And lyrics is what the music, like you said, is always going to be a music avenue for us, man. Uh, but you had a song called American Beauty. I like how you describe hip-hop as a female, man. Uh, can you tell me what was you thinking in your mind when you just pinned that joint out, bro? All right, when I made that song, I just wanted to be savvy and creative. And I always looked at hip-hop in that perspective. But I don't want to take the credit for that whole concept because Common Sense did it before me. Yes, he did. Uh, I used to rub up. Yes, he did. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and I told Kyle, I said, yo, I'm going to do a song like that one day. We used to freestyle on Ron's Ron, 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 radio show one day. And I said, and I told him, I like that song so much. But I wanted to expand on it. I wanted to go deeper in it, in a different realm of it, the way Colin did it. But, but, the, but to do a conceptual record like that has always been something I dreamed of doing. And it goes back further than Common Sense. Yeah. The very first concept record that I heard like that, that made me want to push myself to do something like that was MC Shan. He had a song called Cocaine back in the days. I remember. And yeah. That song was one of the most ahead of his time records I've ever heard in my life. Right. He talked about cocaine like it was a girl. And when we first heard the song, we all thought he was talking about a girl. And if you listen to the audio on YouTube or wherever of Shan performing that song, it's obviously at a live show, and you can hear the reaction from the crowd. It sounds like he's talking about a relationship, and then at the end of the song, he said something, and he said, don't you know by now that her name is Cocaine, and you heard the whole crowd gasp, and they're like, oh, because everybody's mind was blown. Wow. So I was blown away by that. I, I, that was the first conceptual record ever in hip hop, so he doesn't get his credit for that. Yeah, they, they be look, overlooking Shan, man. I don't know what's wrong with him. And see, Shan, I hear you, baby. Shan is, Shan is way, way, way better than, way better than the credit he's given. He's, he's amazing. No you doubt. You wouldn't be no queen without Shan. That's right. So, so American Beauty, you might as well say, it's, it's because of Shan. Okay. All right, the next one is the Saga Remix. And I want to I wanna just focus on specific lines. You said, and I quote, you said, look at my life. You see white coke, black roses, and tears shed for past soldiers. We all walk in the path chosen. Mm. Break it down That's for me. us. Well, look at my life. You see white coke and black roses. It's like I'm reflecting on my life on the, on the journey that I've been through my, my, my sins and, and my redemption it's like see white coke and black rose the white coke obviously is for you know what I was what I was hustling the black rose is, is death mm, talk I've to him so much death in my life I was talking to one of my friends he's white so he's not from the streets and it's like he was like yo he's like the way you lost people reminds me of like my grandfather and my grandfather's way older than you like an old man but it's like when you're in the streets you compare like the life of a black person in the hood or a minority in the streets that becomes so frequent we've become accustomed to it mm. the way senior citizens become accustomed to it it's like uh, you know you're 80 years old and you ask your grandfather, your uncle, what you doing? I, I got to go to a funeral. My friend died. So it was like you expect it. And it's like in our situation in the street, that becomes so common, we expect it. Yeah. It's like we become insensitive to it. And it's like, you think of North Carolina. I use North Carolina for a perfect example. Just North Carolina, I lost my man, Blue. Yeah. I lost my man, Elton. He got killed in North Carolina. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, that's two, two 
two of my closest friends. And then when you come to Queens, you know, my man Floyd, my man Spink, mm. my man Shabazz, my man uh, Will, like so many people died. Death is so common. It's like there's more death. There's more people going to funerals and wakes yeah. than going to weddings and graduations and certain no, Isn't no, that crazy? Yeah, it is. Now, check this out. I, I believe in divine intervention. I don't believe in, in anything like uh, a coincidence because just the way you broke that down goes right into goes right into the next song I'm getting ready to ask you about. It's called Fallen Soldiers. And this is the line I want to focus on. You said, did you ever lose a nigga you love? Then you ask yourself, is there's a heaven for thugs? God forgive me for filling niggas with slugs. Is it a crime when we dealing these drugs? Woo. Man, you just went right into that one. I don't even think... And matter of fact, while you're saying that one, Fallen Soldiers, I want to give a... Uh, say rest in peace to your homie Fly Ty, man, uh, that passed. And uh, I, I was... I seen that on uh, your movie, your, your documentary, Who Am I? And uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later, man. But right now, we got to take a commercial, quick commercial. And uh, we about to play a video from Comega. You want to introduce this video, brother? You want to Comega, check it out. Listen to me good. The artist is the most important person. You are the teacher. People listen to you, they don't listen to their preachers. Exaggerated tales of hustling We quick to pass judgment and fail our brothers Instead of talking about Laura Hill Talk about Laura's skill Truth be told, there may never be a girl as hell Don't gossip about Dame Dash Give prop to Dame Head For the rise of Jay and Versana Kanye Man, you know niggas is crazy That's why we ain't got shit Rappers hate each other, not the labels that got rich Don't care about culture, they only want profit If your album sells slow, bet you get dropped quick Q-Tip warned us, the industry's toxic For reference, check out BDP Sex of when styles made, I get high, it was playing all day When styles made, I'm black, it didn't get enough play I guess they got a problem with anything positive Doesn't make sense if it doesn't bring dollars in Those that managed us, those that were our agents Those that were our accountants Those that were the record executives Those that were the owners of the record label You never got true accounting Nothing that you did What's the difference between a label and pimping? You sell yourself, they tell you how to spend it Whole ass niggas slow down, listen Pimps prey on minds with no ambition They keep you fly Images, promotion, they keep you high So a nigga isn't focused, you living in the moment Feeling yourself, they living in plus homes What's really success and what's swag? I don't care how you dress or what you drive I want rhymes that really impress You say it's all about money, do you even invest? Any time in your rhymes? Let me guess You so nice you don't write, it just comes to you Cause you the shit, nah, you just doodle I lyrically abuse any rapper who choose to Step to me, I will bring it right to you who do you think you are to them? You are nothing but a piece of meat. And you're only as valuable as your last hit song. And when you make no more hit songs, nobody cares for you. No more. Men lie, women lie, numbers can be altered to look high. Shareholders hate taking losses. This is big. They don't care about your lyrics The better you sell, the better future for their children Controversy sells, so they support conflict Makes more progress, means more profit And artists get killed, they say they so sorry Meanwhile, they tell you the date of his next project What a life, death made a more profit Record companies get paid for your drama And Beef DVD is on BET So every artist who was on it was beaver for free While the royalties are going to QD3 He Quincy Jones son, what he know about Beef? No disrespect intended I know we got beats But it's deep How the rich get paid off our grief And every one of our great artists They died With nothing And the record company executives Were rich sending their children To college Brilliant. 
But the question is, can you put your brilliance in a song? Can you put the condition of the world in a song and inspire your We are back, and I am your host. This is Chosen One Records Radio, and I got my man called Mega in the building. And for y'all that's been tuning in and listening, you know we going all the way in with them, man. So check this out. Therapy. This is the song I want to know about. You says, I am a poet. Due to my respect of Big's assassination, I rep NYC with no kingly aspirations. That shit is deep. You got to speak on that one, Mega. I ain't gonna say that was, that was a nice ball right there. Um, that shit was fire. I mean, it, it came to a point where so many people was fighting over a crown, and I felt it was kind of barbaric. Ooh. And it was like, I felt it was barbaric, and I felt it was insensitive, and, and that we as a city and as peers should show more integrity. And I gave you a perfect example. Do you listen to reggae? Yeah, all the time. All the time. Who they, who they say the king of reggae? It's a couple. They say Bob Marley is, but it's a couple of them that's, that that want to be. You got Sizzler, you got Capleton. Okay, time out. We're not talking about the we're not talking about the wannabe. We're talking about who, who they say is Bob Marley. The birthday show is Bob Marley. Yep. All right. He's been dead for how many years? A long time, brother. Who do they say is the king of rock and roll? Uh, mm, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that one right offhand. They always say Elvis is the king. Yeah, they, they always, always say the that. King. Who they say the king of pop? Michael Jackson. How long has he been gone? A long time, man. So Biggie wasn't even dead a year and people were screaming at the king of rap. Woo-hoo. Y'all getting this on Chosen One Records Radio. Radio. Go talk to him, brother. So I just felt like, wow, like, and so like, this is somebody that a lot of us knew. I knew Biggie, but I didn't know him as well as some people that was claiming the crown. I know if my friend died, I'm not claiming his crown, because not only do I respect my friend, but our relationship is deeper than my aspirations. So mm. how better to pay homage than to continually to rep my man? Yeah, so he's the king when he's alive, and there was no new coronation, mm. and he's still a king. Whew. That's, that's some real shit. Yo, Kamega is on fire. Y'all tripping, man. Y'all better pay attention. Whew, that's some real shit. Hey, my next joint is called... Are you my nigga? And the verse, verse I want you to, to drop, and that's a hot video, by the way. Y'all need to check it out. Go on YouTube, on these social sites, and check that video. That's fire. This that mega, this that mega with cornrows that was spitting that fire flames on your ass. Therefore, I never sleep because I may never wake up. Felonies no longer worry me. For real, it's the betrayal and the jealousy. The insecurities, the things they might never see. Making niggas' minds corrupt. Then my nine erupts, denying what life you had expired. You tried your luck and died for what? You asked for forgiveness, but my eyes were shut. You wasn't wise enough to stop me from rising up. Are you my nigga? When you was dropping in, when you was dropping those verses, uh, matter of fact, I just I believe that, like I said, with those cornrows in your head, man, I'm not saying that made a difference, but I believe you intimidate intimidated niggas with the shit you were saying in that song, man. <laughs> and, and that's just real talk, man. Like you, you, I believe you just intimidated people with the shit you were saying in that song. Can you just tell us where you was at, man, mentally, spiritually, where you was at at that time? If I intimidate anybody with that song, they can't be cool with me. <laughs> like, if I meet somebody and they say I was intimidated by that song, I don't even want to be cool with them. So that song was based on morals and principles. I basically asked them how much of a friend are you? Woo. If I die, would you cry? Me, would you provide? God, peace, would you be with me side by side? Who could be intimidated by that? <laughs> if I got love with somebody named God, it's instinctively, it's instinctive nature for me to cry. If I care about somebody named me, it's instinctive nature for me to provide. Yeah. If I care about somebody named God, I'm with them instinctively. Uh. Why would they be intimidated by me actually? It's like saying, if it's hot outside, would you give me a glass of water? Of course I would. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, so man. I'm just asking questions that every real person should ask. Ask, ask themselves about the people that they deal with. We, that, that was a reality check. 
Yeah, which bring us to the next point. The next song is They Force My Hand. It seems like you were disciplining niggas, brother. Yeah, um, They Force My Hand, I think, uh, I don't want to take credit for that song. That was a tragedy because I'll be, um, he quarterbacked that song. You know what I'm saying? That was on his album as well as mine. And it was his idea to do that record. So basically, I can only take credit for the stuff that I said. And I wanted to get deep on it. And I did set the song off. I did get on the song before him. Man, you killed that shit, brother. You killed that shit. <laughs> well, I was just, I was just, you know, I was just, I try to, I try to speak from a street dude's perspective, but not glorify. I try to talk common sense and try to talk real stuff that's relatable. And I also, if you listen to my music, I'm not the dude that's glorifying the streets, man. I'm the dude that's trying to tell dudes the pitfalls of it. Like, these are mistakes I made, so hopefully you don't have to make these mistakes or... Man, you re- you, you, you rep that shit well, and this is the last one we coming to, man. And this is the one I, I say this one for last. They say you say the best for last. It says, "Get out my way," and that's a hot ass video too. You says, "I'm iller than you. I'm realer than you. Dealt with more killers than you." Get out my way, or I'm going to take what's yours, make love war, spray up doors. Woo. Explain that shit, Mega. <laughs> Explain that, that, was just, that was basically like, um, leave me your fuck alone. I'm here. I'm <laughs> that was really his, yo, you, you, you have to understand this. I was on Death Jam for like four or something years. Mm. My, my album was on the shelf. An artist's career don't even last four years sometimes. Mm. So for me being a show four years, and then people that were in position were making calls and, and pulling strings to have my career stop, cease, so nobody could mess with me. So of course, that was my, I was venting on that record, like, I'm here, fuck y'all, <laughs> I'm needed. Get out of my way. Hey, yo. I'm, I'm basically, I'm saying, I'm here now, leave me alone. Oh, it's gonna go, it's gonna be a problem. I'm here now. Hey, man, and you killed that shit. Listen, we watched you, man, blossom it, watch your career blossom, man, and, and, and now we get in the, 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 the more mature mega, but is there a chance that we will ever see that nigga in the cornrows again, brother? <laughs> is there a chance he, is there a chance he could just come out the booth on these niggas' ass? And, and just um, shut shit down. I'm gonna tell you this, the cornhole guy. I'm gonna tell you this. A rapper, a rapper made me upset. Um, I don't know when. It was rather recently. And um, I was fighting with my conscience because a part of me was like crush him. Okay. And the other part was like, don't do it. Yeah. Because if you apologize or. If you if everything is made right, you're gonna regret you did it. Okay. So, like I don't wanna like if if I send if I send for this rapper, I'm not gonna say his name, but if I send for this dude, it's gonna be ugly. Like <laughs> it's it's like trust me, like I don't so I almost went back to that for a second, but I'm I'm trying to chill now because somebody called to him and was like, Yeah, I wants to talk to you, da 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 that's right. So I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? I put a ceasefire. <laughs> but as far as the um, the aggressive, uh, the aggressive core mega, I got some aggressive joints. Ooh. The energy mega, I got some of those um, right now in the stands. We're about to release some of the, Actually, I got a song I'm about to release with me and CNN. Okay. Uh, pretty soon. Come on, come on. Man, so the War Records Radio. Listen, I'm gonna just speak for for my myself. I'm gonna speak from my point of view. Man, they do not want to see that nigga with cornrows. I don't give a fuck what they talk about. I'm telling you, man. I wanna um and and here's here's where we at now. Why I was watching on the internet, so uh surfing uh YouTube, man, and I caught you on the uh Noriega show, the uh, Drinking Champs, man, and you said something. And it was powerful, man. I don't think nobody, I, I mean, I, 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 I know they seen it. The people that was there, they had to feel it. And anybody who watched it, they had to feel it. And they're going to come to the same point I'm about to make right now. You said, 
Money ain't everything. Some folks are morally bankrupt but financially rich. And man, when you said that, the whole damn room paused. And even Nori, I, I can see it in Nori's face. He said, continue, brother, because that shit, man, I was watching it and, and got chills after you said that shit. So what I, before I let you elaborate on it, I just want to say, man, the shit that you say in your music, brother, uh, whether anybody want to give you your props or not, man, you, you one of them niggas that say shit to ignite shit in people's mind, to make them think, brother. And that's a, you, I think that's good how you do that shit. But elaborate on that right there, man. Morally bankrupt, but financially rich. I mean, when I said that, I think that was your, your right. The whole world gets paused. Um, I think I stunned everybody with that. I took the air out of the room. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most powerful Genius. Go ahead, brother. Talk to him, man. <laughs> Talk. None of, these people, none of these people will ever have a live debate with me. Mm. I would I would do it for free. Mm. None of them. <laughs> you, know you heard it here on Total <laughs> World Records <laughs> Radio <laughs> first. Get him, brother. My independent record sold more than anybody expected it to. My, my career, I put out my first independent record 16 years ago. Here we are in 2017. And I'm still doing my thing. Still rocking. Still rocking. Never had a, never had a, I've never had major label backing. I've never had a major, a, a, a super manager. I've never had superstar artists like fully behind me. Mm. Like it was me. People walked away from me. They let, they, people were bad to me. People gave up on me. And it was just based on survival instincts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it was based on building relationships. It's to the point now where people in the industry that I respect, people are coming to me and apologize. Wow. You know, I was wrong about you, or I was told this about you, I was wrong. And all of my years, and I'm one of the young aspiring artists, and if you're an older aspiring artist, so listen to this. You can say what you want about Cornega, but one thing you will never say is, he asked anybody for anything. I never asked nobody for nothing. There's no rapper from Queen's Bridge or anybody that would say, Mega King and me asked me for money. Mega King and me asked me, I never asked nobody for nothing. That's for one. For two, you would never find somebody that say I was a professional. Executive to this day, why do you think all these companies do business with me? I've never been late to a meeting. I'm never late to studio sessions. I'm never 
never made the show. You've never heard about um, me getting in trouble with the law since I've been making music. You've never heard about me having fights or, um, at my shows. You've never heard, heard a woman say mega uh, was inappropriate or rape charts or any of the book. I stay away from all negativity. That's I good. stay away from it. Now, that's, that's what you call somebody that's serious about his business. And speaking of... Speaking of fights, I didn't even know you was nice with them hands, man, that you was boxing and all that shit, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, y'all need to go check out Mega's movie slash hip-hop documentary. Listen, that's some shit to see that educate y'all on Core Mega so y'all can know. You understand? My man got a real story. He a real nigga. It ain't just him saying it. It's thousands of people saying this shit about this man. So y'all need to get up on your shit, man, and go on YouTube, man. Check out Who Am I? The movie is deep, man. I just wish I could have met you earlier, man, like when you first did that movie because we would have came out with Who Am I, Who I Was, and Who I Became. We would have hit their ass with some trilogies like The Matrix or something, nigga. <laughs> you know what? I'm try- I like doing sequel to it. I'm, trying to- I'm thinking about doing a sequel to it now because right now, I want you to listen to my album, Mega Philosophy. That was my last album I made. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Man, that was a couple of, that, that wasn't no back in the day. That was a few years ago. Listen to Mega Philosophy and listen to, and just listen to it. It's my most mature album, but it's like the topic that I'm touching on. Mm-hmm. Just listen to it. And then and you, and you reach back to me and tell me what you think. No doubt. Now, check this out. If, if for, for, for those who listen to Chosen One Records Radio, y'all know I'm an artist. Y'all know that, uh, y'all know that I'm an activist. I'm very active in what I do. And uh, just from watching Cormega's movie, man, Who Am I? Like I said, y'all need to check that out on YouTube. Uh, one of his homies passed, Fly Ty. That's what we'll say, Fly Ty passed, rest in peace. And they were there mourning his, his uh, you know, his passing. And, man, the police came around the corner looking like they was ready to tear some shit up, man. I'm talking about they had full, fully body armor suits on and everything, man. That's anybody go and watch this movie on youtube it's called who am i man and you're gonna see man this shit is real this this shit is not no joke i believe you too if them cameras were on there because they had billy clubs in their hand they had the shields they was ready they even how many cops did you see a lot so many i couldn't count man it was so many i couldn't count i seen them back that damn paddy wagon up they was ready to damn take out of there however that shit was about to get wicked man so thank the most high that we had some cameras there filming while that shit was going on man that's a fact that's a fact no doubt no doubt man and uh here's one more thing i want to say at the end of your movie who am i you said you just want to be respected and you want folks to say that dude kamega is ill man man you is an ill brother man and i think a lot of my know that and like I said before I think you intimidate a lot of folks man they ain't gonna just come out and say that shit but motherfuckers might just really be intimidated man of, of your level with your skill your level with your hustle how you move how you dress how you do all your shit man they just might be intimidated about you I'm gonna tell you something my cousin Ugi said God bless his dad he said you know why some people don't like you cause they don't got nothing on you mm. and I was like and, I, and then um, I was trying to figure out what he meant and then somebody else said something similar. And then it's like, now you got Instagram, you got all these sites that throw up all the throwback pictures. Yeah. Right? So, every picture you see of me back in the days when I was younger, every single picture you see of me. The nigga was fresh. 
The nigga was fresh. The nigga was fresh from head to toe, clean, in different sneaks, different pants, all kind of shit. Man, the been doing this shit. All right. Everybody can't say that, but everybody wants to everybody wants to portray themselves as something. And the thing about the rappers, a lot of rappers are selfish. Wow. In general, like I'll say this because they want everything. You can't have everything. I I give a perfect example. I don't know how to sing. Mhm. Uh, and I'm gonna so so I know how to sing. I'll take this guy to sing. I don't know how to slam dunk 360. So I know how to slam dunk 360. He's a great oh, guy. I, that mega not to cut you off. Only reason I'm jumping in on this one because I don't want to lose it. He talking about slam dunking. I see Mega on the court is f***ing Tim's pulling down three pointers like Dirk the Whiskey or somebody. You hear me? <laughs> Damn, hey Mega, I didn't know you had it like that, boy. <laughs> the jump shot is coming, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> hey, look, he and he had Tim's on while he was doing this shit. Skip to my Lou was on the court. Hot sauce was on the court. And Mega was out there pulling threes like he was in the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> but, but, but carry on, brother, carry on. You're talking about if you knew somebody who can sing. I just wanted to get that in there. That's what I'm saying. The problem, our problem with rappers is they're selfish. Nobody wants to admit that they was regular, or nobody wants to be content with what they what they excel at. Like if I'm not a street dude, if you wasn't a street dude, like some rappers, they gotta be the most street dude, and then they gotta be the most real dude. So you can get familiar with Cormega, especially you new, you newcomers who just getting into this new hip, into hip hop, and you listening to this new stuff. You need to find out the real shit, the real shit that's popping. Yeah, man, that's some real shit you said. He interested in being a real father, a real businessman, and that's some good stuff, man. And they need to hear that come from somebody like you, brother, because a lot of a lot of these other rappers, they ain't telling them that shit. They ain't telling them that shit at all. Mm. I don't, like that. I don't like that either. Yeah. Like, um, Who do you like in the industry right now? I like a lot of people. First of all, I respect every single rapper, even if he, even if he's garbage. Ooh. Even if a rapper's garbage, I'm gonna tell you why I like them all. Because look at look at the other options. Look at the alternatives. Mm. Like we all know, if some of these rappers wasn't rapping, what would they be doing? Hustling or robbing? Exactly. So you got some rappers that are straight. That I might hear their music and be like, turn that off, it's disgusting. But at the end of the day, that person put their mama in a new house. Yeah. They, that person taking care of their family. I gotta respect that. I, I can't even respect that. Right, so I respect right. that. Talent wise, I respect that. Like, 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 I resp
that I like. Hard to be too far. I like I like what she's doing because she's having fun with. It. I like um I like some of Rick Ross's stuff. Okay. I like my man Gunplay, obviously. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who else is in the world? Y'all, y'all got a song together too, right? Oh yeah, I did a joint with Gunplay. Yeah, a couple. No doubt. Uh, I like um uh, I like this what, what my man um, Kendrick is doing. No doubt. With LA rap, I like how he's aggressive and assertive on all those features. Cause it's like it, it makes people focus on lyrics or, or trying to go hard on the track instead of just you know what I'm saying. I like Nipsey Hussle. Mm-hmm. Like um, there was a lot of people that I like. I like the producer Knife Wonder. What he's doing, with, he's doing some good things. North Carolina Knife um, Wonder, Knife Wonder. Oh, uh, I like my man Knox yeah. from Virginia. Yeah. What he's doing. I yeah. Like, um, I like a lot. I like a lot of people. I like. I'm open minded. I like. There's a brother named Gigs from from London. I really like his stuff. He was on Drake's last album. I like Drake's music. Mm-hmm. I like. I like a lot. I, I, I love. My, my, my favorite thing out of everything, even though it's not rap. Mm-hmm. I love Rihanna. Like everything she does is just dope. Every song she does. I could re- like her last album, Anti, I really enjoyed her album by accident, too. I heard it by accident. I was like, my daughter's playing, so I'm like, what's this? And I heard it. Next thing you know, I'm listening to the whole album. So my favorite artist of the moment is Rihanna. Okay. You say stuff, man, that, 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 that touch people and, 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 and make them think. Because me, you know, I'm such a critic when it comes to lyrics and, and bars, man, because I grew up in that area, listening to y'all, man, listening to, listening to Nas, listening to you, listening to uh, uh, AZ, The Firm, all, everybody who was on that shit back then, you know, I came up out that era, man, Biggie, Wu-Tang, all of them, Rakim, uh, KRS, all of them. And when I hear certain shit on the radio, man, I just can't fuck with it. But now that you made me look at it a different way, now, you know, like, damn, what would they be doing? I, I, I got a different outlook on them now. You understand what I'm saying, brother? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's some real it shit right there. Me, it took a lot for me to be like that, too, because you know I grew up in that same era, too. I'm, I'm baptized in hip-hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm baptized with like, every way I went. out y'all we got the understanding the true meaning book signing that's saturday september the 23rd at 6 p.m to 9 p.m hamilton's bakery 3570 broadway new york new york 10031 you can get your tickets at eventbrite.com and 20 dollars will get you an autographed copy of that book and a cup of coffee or as he say a cup of tea because everybody don't like coffee and he has those Ewans, that co- that Comega Ewan, that joint. You can get that at UNAthletics.com. And when I tell you they hot, they hot. You need to check them out. Look, brother, is there anything else you want to say to them, man, before we get out of here and play this song? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Free water, free water. Mind your business. Mind your business. And thank God for everything you got. Cool. <laughs> it gets no realer than that. This is Chosen One Records Radio. This is my man called Mega, and we get ready to play a song from his album, Mega Philosophy. Catch y'all next time. Chosen One Records Radio.
I speak valuable lessons, so check, check this, this y'all. Love you question it. Hate is evident. People who never voted betray you for dead presidents. Somewhere two faces. Friend and enemy. And gain nothing cause they don't deserve anything. I risk my life for niggas who didn't write a visit. During my time in prison, I realized my friendship isn't what I envisioned. And I'm tired of giving with no reciprocation. Thankfully, times are different. I pray for friends I lost. Grateful to find religion. And my life keeping it real is making right decisions. Loyalty has its toll, it costs nothing to mind your business. You can add this to the list of deepest lines I've written. I guess my higher vision comes from knowing sky's the limit. And I acquired wisdom from triumph and failure. Money could come and go. But valuable lessons are never bad investments, and they last forever. All these lessons that I learned only in one thing. I just want to live my life. Emphatically, my blood circulates conscious My family is blood that circulates gossip My sister calls my cousin, my cousin calls his mom But nobody calls me, and I'm the topic Similar to what my aunt did to my father Was consumed by drugs while she consumed vodka I ain't feeling that Hypocritical, judgmental bullshit The pot calling the kettle black Should simmer down, one thing I never lack It's food for thought, I just facts the main cause, crabs want to pull you back When you make it out, because they lack Potential to rise, it's clear to see The root of evil has affected my family tree Can't bloom, resentment and greed I so deep, my grandmother was victim of thieves Of her own kin, though we all sin I call it how I see it, that's some cold shit I forgive, but I won't forget Siblings acting funny over money, I don't owe you shit All these lessons that I learned only in one Harder, fought harder. If we fought as hard for love, we'd be much stronger. You wanna argue about what I didn't do, yet ignore what I did. When you accused me of cheating, it was only your guilt manifesting itself. As a result, you'd rather hate me than be mad at yourself. Now you free, we no longer trapped in lies. You'll never find happiness until you happy inside. We've been up, we've been down, we laughed and we cried, but through it all, I showed you. I'm a provider, now you taking me to court Saying you need support for your living expenses Really? How is this? You get advice from women who senseless With no life, so they wanna get in my business Ignorance can't match infinite wisdom It's supreme over weak schemes and hidden agendas All these lessons that I learned only in one thing I just wanna live my life